Greetings everyone, and welcome to Anime Night in the Dojo. Today's featured show, Bleach, Thousand Year Blood War. Yep, Bleach, Thousand Year Blood War, episode 11. Welcome back to the Dojo, I'm Ryu. He's Age, we're back for more Anime Night in the Dojo. And after last week, we have officially won Kempachi because I guess there can only be one. So they're like the Highlander or something. I don't know. I mean, that was... <laughs> That was the rule from the beginning. The fact that Unohana has been around this whole time was an exception. Right. Which. Did we ever get confirmation, like, ever throughout the series that we remember that why? Like, who came up with that rule? Because she was the first one, wasn't she? Um, I don't think she was the first one. Maybe um, she wasn't, yeah. It was just that, like, the title of Kenpachi is supposed to have been, like, a thing that's been passed down amongst the soul society for who knows how long now and it's just supposed to be like a, the strongest fighter in all of the soul society right so and the only way you get the title is by killing the previous holder of the title yeah so that's that was a thing uh current kempachi which we'll just from now on refer to as kempachi because that's who he's been the whole freaking series and unohana has just been unohana until we found out what she was beforehand uh now has his actual Zanpakuto, not just, you know, his rusty blade, <laughs> which uh, which is a problem, like we mentioned last week, for pretty much everybody, because now he has that, he has Zanjutsu, and he's not holding himself back subconsciously. <laughs> the, the double whammy of holding yourself back, just terrifying. So it, it'll be interesting to see what he's capable of... Uh, when he finally fights again, which probably not going to be in this core, I'd assume, with three episodes left, but yeah, uh, probably not. We'll just have to see because Ichigo has been kicked out of the Soul Society uh, to go find himself. You know, he, he's got to find himself. That that convenience store that the last episode ended on. We, we went back and looked at the first episode of Bleach because that's where we thought it was from, but it's not. It's kind of like a back alley, and there might have been a convenience store there, but eh. yeah, I don't, I don't know. I never actually read any of the source material for Bleach, um, so I don't know if it was like better shown in the source material. But in the first episode, you never really get to see enough of the alley or anything like that to really uh, correlate the two locations. <laughs> right. So maybe it's manga. Not entirely sure, but I'm sure we'll get some sort of something in this because that's where Ichigo's at. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if we get like any kind of branching story with whatever Renji's going to do now. You know, uh, whether his Zanpakuto just gets fixed or he gets an entirely new one, what they're going to do with that. It'll uh, probably just be a case of like we're going to get uh, whatever the hell's going on with Ichigo like all this episode more or less and then it's just going to be once he figures this whole thing out over this next episode or two, he's just going to come back and it's going to be like Ruki and Renji are already like fully on the mend and Byakuya is probably like getting close, but still not fully recovered yet. Right. Since he was in the worst shape of the three of them. Uh, <sighs> oh yeah, that's where we're at. Should be interesting. Um, don't know what else they could really do here. I believe at this point of Squad Zero, there's still the, like, Mayuri's mentor, former colleague, squ Squad Zero member that's basically, like, Mayuri, and then the monk guy. Uh, Scientist chick and the monk guy, yeah. Uh... Yeah, so we'll just have to see. Um, maybe we'll get something from the side of the Quincy's at some point, because Uryu's been missing from the last, like, ten episodes. <laughs> but maybe not. They, they might be waiting on him for a bit, because, uh, once again, four cores, so they got plenty of time. So. I got nothing else going to this one, Age. Yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I don't think we're going to really, at least not for this episode, maybe not the next episode uh, as well. We're probably not going to see much more of the palace until uh, whatever this thing with Ichigo at least get some sort of direction, if not outright resolved. But we still do need to, yeah, see what the other two Squad Zero members are 
there for because like yeah. as we found out the whole thing with the squad zero members is that they're they got elevated to squad zero because of accomplishments not because like they were ridiculous fighters or anything like that so we still have to see what the monk guy and the scientist chick are responsible for that when it comes to developing the soul society right so uh let's go ahead and push some buttons and see what's up this week here's something I meant to bring that up last episode, but the whole thing with the uh, Asa Uchi and stuff like that does kind of resolve his uh, I'm back home. Ichigo, yeah. uh, where have you been, boy? Seems like forever since... He didn't seem very yeah. happy to see me. Is the whole thing with, like, the fact that we never really got any sort of answer as to why the captains all have Zompacto, whereas, like, all What's the wrong with rank you? and file Why are you being so melodramatic? One. You show up at my door, out of the blue, acting like it's the end of the world. I'm like... Oh, now he's just cheating to get past all the normal humans. What a dick. Must have been some <laughs> kind of prank. Well, anyway, thanks. I'm, uh, I'm heading home. Don't worry. I'm okay now. Wait a second. Is his dad always freaking Endeavor? <laughs> well, I think I can see why. I don't There's know. no way you can fix your broken Bonkai, not in your current state. After all, you don't know the first thing about yourself. See? That's why I'm betting on you to be the next squad captain, Toshiro! Whoa! Based on rank, I'm next in line for the captain, see? Not him! Bungie, well, on, that like you didn't turn out that way, that's for sure. Squad would end up broke <laughs> sitting in a bar somewhere. I quite agree. Besides, my training's coming along well. I'd make a fine captain. Shut up, Toshiro! You're such a suck-up! It's so annoying! <laughs> Will you shut up, sir? No one cares about your stupid manju. Except for him. It was delicious, by the way. So it yep. was you! I knew it! That's gross insubordination! Hey, forget what I said about you making captain, Sir, huh? do you remember the incident report from two months ago? Huh? Oh, Captain Shiba, what a surprise! What are you doing here? Oh, me? I was looking for a bathroom and I got lost. Sir, you're In the sky. <laughs> Look, man, if it does rain tonight, you can go on home. <clears throat> Never could pee with an audience. Your kindness alone will be enough to make her happy, I'm sure. Don't be ridiculous. Kindness has nothing to do with it. Probably explains why he bailed space. entirely well, right there. Difficult, if not impossible, yeah, I mean, to secure a future. And I don't mean hers and mine. I mean, we already went over this earlier that Buddha you primarily learned his Quincy powers from the grandfather. The one that was just confirmed to have connections to the king. Alright. <laughs> Is something wrong with this person? Oh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> I wonder if all the other soul reapers are like this. No. Uh, why is everything Aizen's fault? Like, seriously. Is it just... We'd have no series without Aizen. Straight up. Everything just circles back around to that man. So, uh, you know, everybody just give Aizen a round of applause for you know, us having the series. Yes. Everything just circles back to Aizen. That's just how it is, how it's always going to be, so we better live with it, because this is his world and we're living in it. Well, they're all living in it. <laughs> he has his toe in every random pot imaginable, apparently. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. He's only at minor inconvenience compared to the Quincy King. Right, minor inconvenience. No, no, no big deal. <laughs> anyway, yes, full-on backstory time. Uh, the the last time we saw Ichigo's dad going on about uh the mother was like that like big, gigantic poster of her that he had that was clearly fake. <laughs> so uh, you know, it, it's been a while. Um. Decent backstory. We got to see uh, that Ichigo's dad was the, uh, well, a former captain of Squad 10. The uh, captain before Toshiro, I guess. I assume Toshiro yeah. became the captain after Ichigo's dad bailed. Uh, since it wasn't Rangiku, apparently, because, well, she was summarily not even deposed. Just 
Oshiro just leapt over her because, well, we all know why. I mean, Ishin pointed it out. It's like, we don't need a captain getting drunk in a bar somewhere, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, Rongoku's never really been <laughs> leadership material. Even if she was strong enough, but she's not. She just, personality-wise, has never really been leadership material. Yeah, uh, and, and Ichigo's dad is, is pushing the personality barrier when it comes to that. So, uh, you know, just kind of whatever. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know we got some Toshiro backstory in the original series. Like, when he grew up with um, that uh, other squad member that was, like, part of Aizen's squad that he, like, attempts to murder. Or does murder? Does he actually kill her? I forget if she dies. Point is, we've seen some Toshiro backstory. We know what his deal was, but now we know that uh, this is where he ends up. But I don't think we ever got like uh, any kind of um, scene with him with Ichigo's dad. You know what I mean? It's like we know he joined yeah. the Thirteen Guard, Guard Squad at some point, but uh, we didn't know that he ended up ended up in Squad Ten and uh, basically like third seed, I guess, at this point, something like that, probably maybe fourth, whatever. Uh, assuming Rongiku is the lieutenant at this point still. Yeah, we've known that Rongiku is uh, old, but it's been older than him the whole time. Um, and presumably she had seniority in the squad, but we didn't know for sure. And we had no like actual confirmation as to which squad uh, Ichigo's dad was part of. We knew he was a captain at some point, we just didn't know when or what uh, squad. Right. So th this one answered several questions. Very many of the questions were answered in this. I appreciate that. Uh, still on the Toshiro train, um, the, the fact that he stole the captain's food is pretty on point considering where he came from. It's like, eh, I'm not gonna let this food go to waste. Nobody's gonna miss this. <laughs> He was hungry, damn it. He was basically a street urchin. Leave him alone. Um, but that was pretty solid. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember that woman at the beginning of the episode. Yeah, I don't really remember I, her either. I. It, it's been so long, honestly. It, it, she probably was in the series at some point. I'm vaguely recalling Ichigo getting like a part-time job. Um, maybe she was part of the Fullbringer arc. I'm not entirely sure because it's been so long. So, yeah, I don't. Yeah. Know. She seems kind of familiar, but I can't really place her either. Yeah. So, probably was in the series at some point. We're supposed to remember her. Don't remember. Her. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, that being said, I guess she doesn't have any like latent power to be able to see like Ichigo's dad walking in the room otherwise he would have did what he did he would have just shown up as his human self and just be like hey I'm here for Ichigo um but yeah she's just a normal human she didn't even have any reaction as to like what the freaking uh uh freaking Soul Reaper badge was right so yeah sorry we don't remember her she seems reasonably interesting she's got that older sister vibe as, he, as she points out so neat but sorry I don't remember you <laughs> um but yeah then it was just full on you know real talk time and well that frame got a little uh jubbly but uh <laughs> yeah I guess it was um the Ishida family that took in Ichigo's mother Masaki because she was more of a... I know Quincy's had like a weird breakdown and they called him something different and she was like more more pure blood or something like that and they had like terms for them. Yeah, I don't remember the exact terminologies that they used, but yeah, she was one of the like noble families which leads into more into like what my initial suspect was and that she's like a descendant of the king. Right. Um... But she's the only surviving member of her bloodline, apparently. Right, which uh, now we know that their family name comes from her. Yeah. So, how about them apples? Nothing wrong with it, just saying. Facts. Um, <laughs> she, uh, 
She she definitely has that like Carol vibe from Tomochan. She she plays mm. the fool, but she's not. <laughs> she uh, she's very good at what she does. Obviously, as she showed off in that fight with, well, once again, Aizen doing Aizen things. Okay, this her her, her training's going so so though. Yeah, her her training's going so so. Yet Ichigo's dad's. This th if this was his bonkai, I'd be surprised. It's probably Shikai. Um, no, this is the Shikai, yeah. Um, which uh, another Soul Reaper with fire power. Okay, so we we get to know a little bit about Ichigo's dad's actual power. So neat. Uh, another fire wielder. All right, I can live with it. It's not like uh, again Ryusai has uh you know the uh, monopoly on being able to use fire. So uh, <laughs> you know, interesting. So solid information. Uh, solid animation on this fight. It was neat. Uh, I forgot how much of a dick uh, this captain was. <laughs> I don't the, remember the guy in the middle. Like he was always the mask guy. Yeah. Um, so so quick to just like I'm just gonna go kill her. It's like, dude. <laughs> yeah. I... I immediately remembered him as being like yeah one of Aizen's goons and one of the other captains, but yeah, I remember he he really wasn't actually like that relevant comparatively to like Aizen and Gein. Yeah, he was around. He did some stuff. He had some interesting scenes, but he was always just like, oh yeah, he's over there doing something. Don't worry about him. <laughs> yeah, like if I recall correctly, like his only significant thing was the fact that he fought and got, I believe he got killed by the freaking the beast captain guy. Yeah. So. Got a little bit more insight into his character, but not really anything too relevant. Um, but yeah, this, this whole sequence uh, explains pretty much everything about Ichigo's origin. Okay. Yeah. Quincy Mother, we knew that. Um, what we didn't know was the fact that that hollow experiment from the Aizen troop over there passed on like what was like the prototype to the visored power onto her. Well, no, this was a more refined version of the uh, visored power because Aizen specifically calls out of, oh, we've lost track of Shinji and them. So like the visors were already created by this point and they've already like considered that to be a failed experiment and moved on to something new. Fair enough. Yeah, that's what that was. Yeah, I believe we were talking during that, so I probably didn't catch that. Um, so yeah, he Ichigo is all over the place. We knew the hollow power had to come from somewhere. You know what I mean? It didn't just, you know what I mean? It just didn't come out of nowhere. You know, it could have been like uh, Aizen doing something like when he was a kid. Who knows? Uh, that that nobody knew of. Um, but this makes sense. You know. The, the power was passed on to his mother, and obviously that power was passed on to him. For reasons. Well, so basically, the way they they were techno-babbling it a bit, so like none of it was actual terms, but like yeah. basically what they were saying is that this hollow, the white as they referred to it, um, over the course of the fight evolved to like the final state and before it died it essentially it infected her with its soul yeah so when she had her first kid ichigo she ended up passing its soul on to ichigo yeah because uh i don't remember his name the the zompakuto creator does straight up say you need to know where he he needs to know where his soul came from mm hmm uh, so, there you have it. He, he he is the four things we talked about. Part human, part Quincy, here's where the hollow part comes from, and still part Soul Reaper. So, he's uh, an incredibly special case. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm not going to write off the possibility of, like, you know, Soul Reaper and Quincy unions in the past at some point. So there could be somebody sort of maybe like him. Um, and we've seen, like, humans with sort of, like, holification power, kind of like what Chad can do. Um, but, you know, Ichigo is, like, the super, super special case. 
you know. And uh, as uh, that member of Squad Zero points out, he he never had a Zanpakuto cho- choose him. You know, mm-hmm. it, it came from just like that catalyst from Episode One with Rukia transferring all her power to him. You know. So, yeah, the whole the whole thing there was basically supposed to be she was supposed to give him half of her power and then basically just let him borrow her Zanpakuto to beat the Hollow. <laughs> However, he ends up taking like ninety five percent of her power and having his own Zanpakuto as soon as he comes out. Right. Um, which was not created by the Squad Zero member, so different. Yeah. Uh. He totally well that that's all which also kinda of leads into the whole thing of I've mentioned this a few times, Ichigo doesn't really have a baseline Zompakto form. It's Zompakto's always been in constant Shikai. So like that just leads more to leads leads even more into the whole fact that he didn't have a normal Zompakto. Right. Um So I was gonna say, but yeah, the fact that his um, Zampakto's personality and everything's on Getsu bears so much resemblance to the king probably comes from his mother. The fact that it functions like his um, Zampakto comes from his father, its actual appearance and so on comes from White here. Because, like, if you notice, not only does White look like basically an inverse version of Hollow Ichigo, it, its arms look like his freaking sword. Right. So, as it stands, pretty much all the information we are looking for that fills in the gaps. So that's cool. Um. It also goes back to, once again, the whole thing of, like, the visors mentioning how, like, yeah, they're very similar to Ichigo, but they're definitely not the same thing. Right. So now we know that Ichigo came after because his power comes from a more refined experiment than what uh, happened to the rest of them. Mm-hmm. So as it stands, the only, like, weird family gaps, I guess, that we have to fill in are, like, what's Ishin's tie to, like, uh, the two... Like, siblings outside the Soul Society. Like, outside the Sarate Gate. Like, the, uh... Whatever you want to call them. The Transportation Masters. Like, whatever the heck they're supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, we know he's related to them. And, uh... We also got con- another family connection we got confirmed here is, once again, like I mentioned during the episode, uh... Uryu's teacher... His grandfather apparently did actually have direct ties to the king. It was Uryu's father who uh, decided to jump ship and totally cut ties with the rest of Quincy society. Yep. Based on just his whole demeanor here, uh, it's unsurprising. He, he probably just wants nothing to do with it. You know? Um, as for the rest of the Quincy's that were shown off in this, yeah... You know, they, they they probably straight stayed true. Um, we don't know what was going on with, like, his father. Like, we we don't know, like, where, like, his mother points out, like, oh, he never tells me where he's going, you know? Yeah. Um, well, she did, she did specifically the whole thing that, like, confirms that his father, the grandfather, uh, Uri's grandfather, uh, has connections to the king because she specifically called out that he went to uh, however the Foff something or other however you pronounce it which is the castle that the king and the whole friggin uh, London Reich is hiding in. Right, yeah. So it's all t- it's all coming together pretty nicely actually. Uh, I guess it's just going to be interesting to see where Uri- Uriu fits in because at the end of the episode after the outro there uh, he was standing in the rain and that let's just call him first lieutenant of the king that we saw that broke Ichigo's on Pacto um, was there like you know staring at him like he owed him something (laughs) so I I guess we're going to be headed toward that so a bunch of stuff got filled in backstory that was neat Um, 
pretty solid action sequence. Uh, yeah. You know. Thanks. Thanks, Eisen. Appreciate it. Presumably, the whole thing that happens with Miseki here is uh, what actually drives uh, Furyu's father away from the Quincy and stuff because it's like the queen, the king, pretty heavily implies in the fight with Ichigo that it was another Quincy who killed his mother. Right. So presumably her relationship with Ishin gets revealed somehow and the Quincy's kill her for it. Yeah. Which uh, has to be a reasonable amount of time because Ichigo's like at least five to six years older than his two twin sisters. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if that gets filled in at all. Yeah. Yeah, and once again, also, Ijigo is old enough to actually have memories of her. Yeah. By the time she dies. Right. And I believe the two twins maybe mention that they don't remember their mother, really. So they might have been when they were super young, too. So, um, yeah. It'll be interesting to see if that gets filled in, because I, I think that'll be relatively important for the story if it's, like, one of the current Quincy's who killed her. You know, I mean, one that's still around. You know, mm. typical plot stuff. So yeah, solid episode. I enjoyed it. Pretty good across the board. Um, yeah. Th there could have been some other stuff in here, but I think this backstory was really important, and I'm glad we got there. Uh, still a couple holes for their family and stuff like that, but um, probably get that at some other point if it's relevant, you know. Just have to see what the uh, what the author put in there. So, as it stands, solid. Uh, last two episodes of the core. I mean, they showed off Uryu at the end of the episode, so presumably him at some point. You know. Yeah. Um, does it actually on the freaking wiki? Does it actually say who his mother is? Because I want to say his mother is actually the main chick. Uryu's mother? Yeah. Yeah. That would track based on, you know. Yeah. yeah, looking at it, looking at the wiki, it is. That is his mother is the father's, like, head maid chick that he keeps around. Got it. That makes sense based on their interaction in this episode. So he also has black hair. So, you know, mm -hmm. if we want to go full MatPat over here, <laughs> trying to debunk the new pokemon protagonist <laughs> is it ash's kid no no it's not <laughs> anyway yeah which does kind of make sense because like like they were talking about here is the like, his mother was very much trying to hook him up with misaki because of the whole you know typical noble bloodline shenanigans and the maid chick herself is a quincy she's just not a noble quincy Right. That's uh, so basically whatever the hell happens with Misa, he, he basically decides, you know, fuck this whole Quincy thing and runs off with the maid. Right. Which is probably why they, you know, disowned them. Basically, it's like, well, fuck those two. <laughs> but they, I believe they stayed off the radar. So, you know, the the rest of them might have wanted to do something about it. But who knows? That that story probably will get filled in at some point as well because it's relevant. So they stayed in enough contact with the main family after Ryu was born that, once again, Ryu's teacher was the grandfather. Right. So, I'm sure we'll get all those holes filled in at some point here. So, anyway, that's all I got. Solid. I enjoyed it. Got anything else, Aid? Um... No. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, beyond how you're watching, we always appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us here in the dojo for more anime night in the dojo in this Bleach Thousand Year Blood War, episode 11. We got two to go. So have a good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever is for you. Have a good one. See you next time. Hey everyone, Victoria here. If you enjoyed the video, please consider pushing that subscribe and like button. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. Thanks again for your time. And see you next time.